put your hands once again together again we are grateful to God for this moment that God has given us to be here uh, in this holy place to share from God's holy writ certainly want to uh, give a shout out again to our presiding elder and certainly to all of you who are here today as God has richly blessed you and you are on fire because I see all of the fans moving. You're on fire. I see it. Amen. Don't let it burn out. Keep it going. Keep it going. Amen. And sometimes you have to press your way through. Sometimes you have to do that. We thank God for it. Um, it says uh, here, um, but Joshua, verse number 10, uh, chapter 6, verse number 10, it reads, uh, but Joshua had commanded to the army, do not, do not, do not shout. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. And when that day comes, he has an explanation mark pointed next to it. It says, then shout. Then shout. Uh, Consecrate me now according to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. So look up with a steadfast hope, and I will be lost in thine. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give thanks. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Uh, let, me, let me just use, if I can, the last two words, the last two words uh, of the 10th verse. Um, I want to add then on to it, then shout. That's what we want to talk about. Then shout. Yeah. Um, hmm. To shout is to utter a sudden, loud cry or command. Command attention as uh, as if one is shouting. Shout, uh, shout is to call or cry out loudly and vigorously. To shout, shout is to speak with a very loud voice. With a very loud voice. Look at somebody. Say shout, shout. Yeah, and often as yeah, yeah. And when you shout, you open up your mouth as loud as possible. Yeah. You know, nobody shouts with a s soft voice. No one has the nerve or the audacity uh, to speak softly when it comes to shouting. When you shout, you open up your mouth. Uh, look at somebody say, shout, shout, you yeah. You open up your mouth. You, you, you open it up as loud as possible because you are trying to convey something. And, uh, and, 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 and shouting just means that you're going to open up your mouth as loud as you can with all of the energy and the exuberance you have. You're going to open it up and shout. You know, I, like, I like that. Uh, yeah, I like that. Shout, 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 uh, shout, third person, singular, simply, a simple present means shouts, shouts with an S on the end of it. The present participle shout has the I-N-G on the end of it is shouting. Some people shouts, you know, I shout, shout. They shouted uh, is the simple past and past participle that shouted, shouts, shouting, shouted. We shout. Yeah, we open up our mouths. They, yeah, open up our mouths and shout. They shouted. They shouted his name to get his attention. Yeah, 
Yeah, whenever, whenever you need to get the attention of the master, you shout his name you get in trouble. I've never known anybody to be in real trouble and just say, Jesus. You open up your mouth and you shout his name. You shout his name. You shout his name. You shout it because, because the truth of the matter is you shout it because you need him now. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody is on the brink of your breakthrough. All you have to do is open up your mouth and shout. Shout. Shout, then, then shout. Look at somebody say, then shout, then shout. We, yeah. Did you know, did you know we can, we can use then to mean next? <laughs> then what? Shout. <laughs> then shout. Open up your mouth and shout. Mm. Yeah. Well, let me give you some historical context to help us better understand what God is really trying to convey in the text. Listen, the city of Jericho, the city of Jericho stood as a barrier to the promised land. It was the first great stronghold of, of the enemy that was intent on keeping God's people from obtaining the promises of God. I'm talking to somebody right here. Its walls were built to withstand anything that an enemy could throw against them. Listen to me. The wall was a double walled construction. It wasn't a simple single block wall or a brick wall like one places in front of their house. It wasn't a simple brick wall like the one that you see in shopping centers. It was something far greater than that. For first, the outer wall, it had an outer wall, outer wall. Listen to it. The outer wall was made of a retaining wall that kept the earth and fill in place and created a wide area of ground. It was on this section, if you can recall, that many of the homes were built into. They were built into the outer section of the wall. I didn't say the inner wall, the outer wall. Their homes were built on the outer part of the wall. As a matter of fact, Rahab had her crib built on the outer side of the wall. That's why she could sneak folk out of the crib because it was on the outside. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. The outer edge of brick extended above the retaining wall and all of it uh, together it measured, check this out, from 32 to 41 feet in height. Look at this wall. Then after crossing the ground, crossing the ground, the, there was secondly a secondary wall. There was another wall which was far greater and a more formidable obstacle than the outer wall. The, the outside wall, it was, it was all of that, but the one on the inside was all of that and then some. Yeah, this, this wall was made of brick, stone, and mortar, and as at its base it was, peep this out, it was just a little bit bigger. It was 46 feet above ground level, then extended upward from there. It was at, it was at six feet thick. That's how thick the wall was, and even more in some sections. The people of Jericho had built their entire, uh, their, their, built their, their city, their entire city to stand forever. They didn't intend for anybody to get inside of the wall to destroy the city. For the wall, the purpose of the wall was to keep people on the outside. Those who lived inside these walls, they were steeped in idolatry, living in constant fear of attack, but for many years had felt safe and invincible behind these great walls. I'm talking to somebody right now. Open up your ears. Peep this out. The city, it remained well stocked with food and water and was prepared for long seasons if, if the enemy uh, were 
were to threaten them if the enemy tried to get inside. They had enough. They had enough food and water on the inside that would last them for a long, long, long time. The important, the important thing to notice here, my beloved, is that in spite of their great walls of protection, in spite of their great walls of protection, their great walls of defense, their great walls of security, their great walls of reinforcement, and in spite of their great number of mighty men of valor, the people of Jericho peeped this out. They were cowering behind the wall because they were afraid afraid on the inside uh, to venture forward. They, they were too afraid to leave. You got all of this reinforcement but you're too chicken to leave. Uh, I know that there's somebody in here right now. You're ready to leave. You're, you're ready to move. You're ready to move. Uh, listen, they had heard of the great and awesome power of God, the people on the inside. Uh, the They had heard of the God of Israel. Word had spread far and wide about the God of Israel. Check this out. The God that did what? The God that dried up the waters of the Red Sea, the God who destroyed the entire war machine of the Egyptian empire in a single battle, the God who led the Jews through the wilderness by a cloud and a pillar of fire, the God who brought earthquakes, fire, and caused thunder and lightning upon the mountain to signify exactly who God is. Every now and again, Again, God will demonstrate who God is with a powerful manifestation. I, I know that there's somebody here now who can testify that the reason you come to know who God is because God uh, demonstrated a powerful manifestation in your life. Well, now came the news that these Israelites, here comes the news, it, here it comes, here comes news, CNN was turned turned on on the inside of the city. Some were watching MSNBC. They were watching. News came on the flat screen television uh, over there on it, in the camp. And, and the news said that they crossed over the Israelites. The Israelites had crossed over the Jordan on dry land. Isn't that a wonderful God that would give them the ability and the capability to cross over on dry dry ground and they were now on their way to the city of Jericho. Can you, can you imagine how they felt? They were already chicken, chicken hiding on the inside but then they found out that a powerhouse was on its way. Isn't it good to know that God created you to be a powerhouse? Listen, listen, no matter, no, no matter how many men of valor, men of valor, that just simply means men of courage, no matter how many men of courage or how thick the walls, they had men of courage and they had some thick slamming walls, but the people of Jericho, they were frightened. They were terrified. They, they, had, they had the type of reinforcement that would keep anybody out, but they were afraid on the inside. Now, the questions, the questions that were asked, here it is, who can fight against God? Who can fight against God? Here it is. Who can defeat the God who, tra who rains down fire from heaven? Heaven. I'm talking to somebody in this house right now. I'm asking you the question. Yeah, the God who who can defeat the God who fed 3,000 people over 40 years in the wilderness? I'm asking you the question. Uh, who can defeat the God who destroyed the power and authority of Pharaoh and then sets his sight on this very city? I came by here to tell somebody that God can defeat anybody and God can defeat any situation. I came to speak life into somebody who was on the brink of spiritual death that God is getting ready to come into your situation and turn it all around. I dare you to look at somebody and say, God is coming. He's coming. 
He is. Here, here it is. Here it is. Let me, let me finish giving you some of the historical context there. This was a dark time. It was a dark period in the life of Jericho. It was a dark time. They, 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 there simply was no way out. There was no way out. Defeat, death, devastation, and destruction of their great city were imminent. And though they would fight to the last man to defend it, defeat was the inevitable. I don't care what they had to fight with. Defeat was the inevitable. Can I park on your street for a moment and tell you that no matter what the devil comes with, I came to tell you that defeat is the inevitable in regards to the devil because the devil has no power over your situation. The devil has no power over your life. Look at somebody say the devil has no power. I came by here. I came by here to give you a prophecy to tell you that no matter how challenging your situation is uh, that the devil will never win the fight. Uh, look at somebody say he won't win. He won't win. And I'm going to tell you why because there is evidence in this sanctuary of people who have been in a fight with the devil and you're still standing. Uh, as a matter of fact you've had a fight with the enemy and not only are you still standing but you still got power Power. You've got power. Yes, you do. You've got power to move forward. You've got power to stand firm in the midst of adversity. You've got power against every weapon that forms against you because you learned a long time ago that uh, uh, there ain't no weapon formed against you that will prosper. I came by here to speak a word into somebody today. Look at your neighbor say, speak a word, speak a word. I came to tell you that you gonna make it. I came to tell you that the devil has no, no, no power in your life. I came to tell you that you gonna have the money to pay the rent. You gonna have the money to pay the car payment. You gonna have the money and I don't care what kind of notice they put on your door. You serve a God that can do anything but fail us. Look at somebody say, I serve a God who can do anything but fail. I, I serve a God that God watch this this is how bad God he is uh, he woke me up this morning and started me on my way uh, look at somebody tell him that's why I praise him like I do because you don't know what I've been through you don't know what it took to get me here you don't know the hell I've been through you don't know the crises that almost killed me you don't know what almost wrecked my life but I'm so so grateful. Look at somebody say, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah, let me, 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 let me skirt on through. I got, I feel, I feel a fire in my belly. Uh, uh, the, the, the children, the children of Israel, under God's divine protection and direction, and Joshua's command, began to march around the walls of Jericho every day, every day, every day. Yeah, they silently marched around the walls. They didn't open up their mouths. They they didn't shout. They, it says they they walked around the walls silently. Nobody said anything six days once a day and and seven times on the seventh day before the shout before the shout before the shout yeah before the shout listen God always has a plan for victory before the plan itself is written in the chronicles of time can I can, can I park here for a second and tell somebody here in this house that before you were even born God had a plan for your life before your mama and your daddy were born God had a plan for you before your grandma 
grandparents were born. Can I just take it all the way back uh, before the foundation of the world? Uh, for my Bible says that he knew me before I was in my mother's womb, uh, which simply means uh, there was some dialogue, there was some conversation a long time ago, and God planned a long time ago for your success. And so I don't need anybody walking around with your head down, mad, upset, angry with the world because God created you with greatness. You have greatness all over your life. You are wrapped up just like a good old package ready to be delivered into your destiny. I came by here to tell somebody, oh, I came to tell you that you that, that you are all that in a bag of chips. I don't care what he told you last night, what they told you yesterday, the stuff she said a couple of weeks ago. I came by here to tell you that there's destiny written all over you and you don't have time to cry. You don't have time to fuss because you on your way somewhere. Look at somebody say, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. First of all, first of all, first of all, let me just hit you with this real quick. We got the skirt on through here. I want to knock this out real quick. First of all, before the seven priests went, uh, the armed men of Israel, before the seven priests, it went the armed men of Israel. Let me say it again. Before the seven priests, before the seven priests, the armed men of Israel, they led the way. They led the way. Who are these armed men? Let me ask you. Can I ask you a question? And will you be honest with me? What weapons do you have at your disposal as a believer? What do you have? The weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not made of things of this earth. We have no swords. We have no shields. We don't have any tanks and rifles and bombs. Those kinds of weapons, they have no impact upon the spiritual warfare that we fight every single day. Our weapons are mighty through God with the power to pull down heavy, even the wall of Jericho. I'm trying to help somebody. Don't you know you've got a weapon that will pull down every wall of Jericho in your life? You've got a weapon that you can call on and, uh, and that weapon will help you to overcome all of the issues that you face in your life. You have a weapon. Look at somebody say, I have a weapon. I have a weapon. My weapon is called God's word. Uh, that's why I've got to stay read up. Uh, I pray uh, and I'm prayed up, but I've got to be read up uh, so that when I get in trouble and the devil is on my trails uh, and I feel like I don't have anything, I can open up uh, my mind where I read my Bible and I can say, I can do all things uh, through Christ who gives me the strength. Uh, I just need to know, is there anybody in here you've ever been in trouble and you didn't know how you were going to get out and you just called on a word you opened up your word and you called on it and God gave you the victory I just want to know how many people in here got the victory can I say to you nothing is impossible to the believer who will learn to use the weapon that God has given them. All of us are called, all of us, here it is, we're all called to silently march forth into a dark world of sin. Uh, we're all called, yes we are, yes, uh, to, to, to walk, uh, to move forward in the midst of all of this craziness. We, uh, we continue marching onward at the command of the Lord, watching God drive back the power of the devil. Did you hear what I said? Uh, God is always driving the devil back. Uh, all you have to do is stand your ground. Uh, can I prophesy to somebody in section A? Uh, listen here. To, uh, you were trying to get somewhere. I need you to stay right where you are to, because God is going to fight your battles. Uh, let me just come over to section D. There's somebody in section D. The Lord told me to tell you that I don't care what you face with. I need you to hold on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, let's practice. You ought to grab the back of your pew and you've got to hold on. 
want because God is going to take you for the ride of your life. Oh, let me keep on going. I got to keep on going. I feel a praise break getting ready to happen. Uh, yeah, not only that, but let me just hit this. Secondly, secondly, behind the armed men came seven priests blowing the trumpets, blowing the trumpets, blowing the trumpets. This is a depiction that speaks of the preaching of the truth of the gospel in fullness. Listen, listen, listen. The number seven is God's number of completeness or fullness. <laughs> seven is the number, one writer says, of divine perfection and completeness. Seven priests tell us that God is calling forth a people who, who, will, who will proclaim his name and cry out for justice and truth, leading people into a life of holiness. Uh, let me just help somebody here. Can I help you? I said justice and and truth and so it really doesn't matter all of the crazy political stuff you see going on it doesn't really matter the nonsense that's coming out of Florida as it relates as it relates to African American history I came by here to tell you that we serve a God of justice and truth for my Bible says peep this out ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so I don't care what demon devil or hellhound tries to hinder your progress. You serve a God that will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Look at somebody say, I'm ready to shout. I'm ready to shout. Yeah, yeah, here we are. Yeah, the priest the priests, they, they were blasting. They were blasting. I didn't say they were playing softly. The Bible says they were blowing their ram's horns, blasting. Now, ram's horns in the Old Testament, they were called shofar. Shofar, somebody ought to write it down. That's S-H-O-F-A-R. This horn was a means of signifying across great distances, and it often was used to send a warning of impending trouble or to call to worship. Can you imagine to blowing the seven priests, blowing their horns, bringing people together to worship God? Oof. As the priests marched around Jericho, they were constantly sounding the shofar, warning the people of Jericho of God's impending judgment upon the city. Can I help somebody in here? Yeah, that even the people in the city God was trying to get right. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why they marched around the city because listen, I don't care where you've been. I don't care who you've been doing it with. I don't care where and how jacked up your situation is. We serve a God who loves you so much that no matter how messed up you are, God will bring you back. Uh, can I just ask a question? Maybe the, okay, maybe you've been saved all your life. Uh, maybe, just maybe, you've never had uh, any issues with drugs. Uh, maybe you were never addicted to alcohol. Uh, maybe you weren't addicted to sex. No, maybe you didn't have any problems with sticky fingers. Uh, Maybe, maybe not you, but I know that there's some people in here, look at your neighbor, tell them it was me. I've been through some hard trials and tribulations. I've had some mess in my life. Look at somebody, tell them I had some mess. I just need to know. I know, I know you're saved now and you're sanctified and you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're tongue-toting and, and you carry that vampire killing cross around your neck and a 10 gallon. In Bible in the church on Sunday. I know where you are now, but what about where you used to be? Uh, do I have anybody who could testify where you used to be? You weren't always saved. You used to cuss out folk. You used to slap people. You used to throw up and wave your hand with one finger.
looking at people. Yep, you used to be there. Yep, you were out there in the world. You were doing your thing. You were doing it good. Can I just, let me just help somebody. I don't know about you, but when I was in the world, I was doing it right. Look at your neighbor say, I was doing it right. Yep, but I'm so glad that when I was doing what I thought was right, that God came in and he picked me up. That's a testimony. I came to tell somebody that I used to be there, but I thank God. Look at somebody say, I thank God. I ain't there no more. I thank God that he picked me up and he turned me around and he put my feet on a solid foundation. And so I'm not so stuck up and conceited that I can't help people to know that I used to be this or I used to be that. But God gave me a warning. Can I help somebody? He allowed somebody to march around me six times and blow the chauffeur to remind me that it was time to get my life together. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Has God ever blew, blown a chauffeur in your life to remind you that it's time for you to get your life back together? Look at somebody say, I know that's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me let me just give you let me just give you a couple more things. I got to go. I got to go. Yep, I got to go. Yep. Thirdly, thirdly, yeah. Let's talk about the Ark of the Covenant. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. The Ark of the Ark of the Covenant. It represents the presence of God. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had uh, you had a, a group of of, of 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 soldiers walking out in front, uh, and then you had the the priests walking behind them, they were blowing. Uh, yeah, the chauffeur, uh, the call to worship, uh, the call to bring people into the body of Christ. Uh, and then behind it, you had the one, to, the presence of God, the one who could turn your situation around. So it wasn't only that God uh, allowed the priest to blow the chauffeur, but it was also God uh, who was there himself. Uh, his manifest presence. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that his manifest presence is in your life? Uh, let me help somebody. There have been some situations you were in uh, and, and you didn't realize uh, that the only reason why you got out of it was because of God's presence. Uh, can I help somebody in this room? To, uh, you thought, uh, yep, uh, you thought that you got out because of your own strength, uh, but it was only because of God's grace and, and God's mercy. I was talking to a friend of mine some years ago and, and she happened to be driving. She was driving down the road and she got to an intersection, intersection and she never had any problems with her vehicle. She was there at the stop sign and, and then she looked both ways and she didn't see anything coming and then it was ready for her to go. She put her foot on the gas pedal and the car didn't go anywhere. To, never had any issues with the car. Never had any problems. Fairly new vehicle. She put her foot on the gas again to, and the car didn't go anywhere. To, just then she looked up and an 18 wheel truck was coming down the road. To, what am I saying? I'm saying that there's some instances in your life where God showed up and he stopped the disaster that was getting ready to happen. There was an instant where you thought you were getting ready to lose your mind and God showed up. Look at somebody around you and say he showed up. No matter of fact, I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Has the Lord ever showed up in your life? You ought to look at somebody and say he did it. He did it. He did it. Yeah. Yeah, well, 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 let me just give you this last point, uh, and then we get out of here. Finally, after the Ark of the Covenant, uh, you have the armed guards. They're out in front. Uh, yep, they're out in front. Uh, and then you have the priest. They're, they're blowing the chauffeur. Yeah, they're blowing it up a call to worship. Uh, and then behind them is the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, it represents the, the presence of God. Uh, and then leading in the rear is what we call the rear guard. The 
rear guard. Yeah. The rear guard reminds us that we need ever be on guard to keep the covenant of the gospel message safe and pure, never allowing anything to sneak into our doctrine that would compromise the message or water the message down. We must continue to preach and teach against evil. We must continue to teach and preach to live a life of holiness we must we must look at somebody say we must we must we must warn the world of the judgment that is upon us we are not to give place to the devil in our midst this requires it does a constant vigilance on all of us the enemy can attack from any direction yes he can he comes all the time and we and 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 we all need to be on guard so that so that we may sound the warning what exactly is your jericho i'm trying to help somebody what is your jericho what is your jericho this miracle is a microcosm it is not only not only reveals the way god performed this particular miracle but it also establishes a pattern for us to follow listen you better to learn how to follow it. It challenges us to confidently and silently walk around our problems knowing that the promises of God have already been given to us. Did you hear what I said? Somebody missed it. I said that the promises of God have already been given to us. What promise are you silently praying around? What miracles are are you silently marching around? What dreams does your life revolve around? As I studied this narrative, I discovered that the wall, the wall, the wall falling was predicated upon the obedience, listen to this, of Joshua and Israel silently marching around the wall of Jericho. You missed what I said. The reason why it failed is because they did exactly what God called them to do. The only noise, can I help you? Look at somebody say, the only noise. The only noise was from the seven priests blowing the shofar to calling the folk to worship while the people marched in silence. The horn was blowing and the people were marching. And then after having marched around the walls of Jericho for six days, the seventh day dawned. This would be the day that victory would finally be won and that Jericho Jericho, Jericho, look at your neighbor say problems, that's all it is, it's problems the problems in your life would be no more God would take the riches of Jericho and put them to use in his own kingdom, the chauffeur the ram's horn sounded a long blast they went around for six days. But then on the final day there was a long blast. They all got on one accord and they say, and they then there was a blast all at one time. And then they were told to open up their mouths and shout. Let me just help somebody. Don't you know that obedience to God will open a door to blessings in your life? Come on let's bring this thing in now uh, yep yep they marched and they marched uh, and they blew and they blew but then there was a there was a a blow together in unison and then there, there was a call of a shout and as soon as they shouted uh, yeah, the walls came tumbling down let me just help somebody when you look at the word shout in the the Hebrew text. 
text. The word, you know what it means. It means war cried. It means that they were going into battle with that which was keeping them from getting their blessings. And I came by here to tell somebody today that there are some things that are keeping you from getting what God has for you. And you've got to learn how to open up your mouth and give a war cry. Uh, you've got to open up your mouth. Look at somebody say, war cry. Uh, it was more than just a shout. It was a war cry. We were going to battle. They were on their way to fight. And they didn't have to pick up a gun. They didn't have to pick up a bazooka. They didn't have to get explosives. They didn't have to get a batter ram. They didn't have to get a taint. All they had to do was give the war cry. To open up their mouth. Ah! Give a cry to every now and again to when you get in trouble to and you've got mess all around you. You've got to learn how to open up your mouth and give a war cry. To, yeah. yeah, one of the reasons why we never get beyond our brokenness is because we don't know how to give a war cry to, because we're too busy trying to fight with physical stuff. We're too busy trying to use uh, what we have uh, in our, at our physical disposal. But I came by here to tell you, if you are in trouble, don't, don't you pull out no weapon. Don't you pull out a knife, uh, a switchblade. Don't you do that. Uh, that's what we used to do. Don't you remember when you used to do it uh, and what happened? But now all you've got to do is open up your mouth uh, and cry out with a shout. Out, a war cry. I'm going to battle. Listen here. I'm going to battle. I'm going to battle. I'm going to open up my mouth. Look at your neighbor. Open up your mouth. Ah! Uh, that's my cry. I came to open up my mouth and give a war cry. Ah! I came to cry out. I came to because I got to fight some things. I've got some people, and you know it. You've got some people in your ways. You've got to get them out your ways. Don't do nothing physically. Just open up your mouth. Folk might think you crazy, but that's okay. Look at them and go, ah! Oh, I came to open up my mouth and not some strongholds. I came to knock down some trauma, to knock down some madness, to knock down some trouble. I need about 10 people in here now. To, you are ready to knock down the walls of depression, the walls of segregation, the walls of nonsense, the walls of inadequacy, the walls of trouble. I came to knock down the walls of family crisis, the walls of issues on my job, the walls. Look at somebody say, ah, ah, open up your mouth and give a war cry. Open up your mouth. I need about five of y'all. Ain't ashamed to open up your mouth. Ah, I don't have time. I don't have time to, to be scared. I don't have time to, for people to look at me like I'm crazy. I'm going to open up my mouth. Yeah. And I'm going to get my war cry. I'm going to fight. I came by here to tell somebody, if you open up your mouth today, right now, when you get home, it's going to be fixed. When you get to work, it's going to be on. All you got to do is open your mouth. Ah! Ah! Open your mouth. Yeah. When you get to the house, the family going to be right. When you get to the house, people going to be right. When you get to where you need to go, it's going to be fixed. Open up your mouth and say, ah! to get my blessing. I came to get it. Look at somebody say, oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I 
came to get it. Uh, look at somebody say, I came to get my blessing. And I'm not going to let no demon, no hex, no curse, nobody keep me from getting it. Uh, as a matter of fact, open up your mouth uh, and say, oh, oh. I need some people who are ready to shout with me. Open up your mouth. Uh, let's whoop the devil in unison. Open up your mouth. Uh, One more time. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Open your mouth uh, and say, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Uh, come on, stand with me. I'm going uh, to open the doors of the church. Uh, I'm open the doors of the church. Uh, uh, there's a few more walls that got to go down. To, uh, let, me, let me help somebody. You can't open up your mouth. Let me help you. Uh, I'm going to open up my mouth for my family member. I'm going to open up my mouth for my co-worker. I'm going to open up my mouth for my spouse. Ah! Ooh. Ooh. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for your word. Ah. 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 Thank you, God. Ah. Ah. For your word. Thank you for the power that's always in it. And may you do exactly what you purpose for it to do. Not just today, but forever. In Jesus' name. And the body of Christ said amen. And thank God. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 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 uh. doors of the church. Let me, let me open the doors of the church. I'm a, uh, somebody, somebody else is ready to join in. They're ready to join in the shout. And you, you, you know, you, you, after hearing this word today, you said, you know what? It's time for me. It's time for me to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, you know, uh, uh, things have just, it, it just hadn't been right in my life. Just, just, just stuff, just, just stuff, just crazy stuff but after hearing after hearing this this word then shout uh, and, and the walls the walls of the issues in my life will come tumbling down uh, but in order to get that I must be in connection with the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and so if there's somebody here today you're in this place you're here today and uh, uh, and you have yet to make that connection, that, that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You, you haven't done it yet. But guess what? Here it is, uh, the beginning of 2023. And you said, it's time for me to do it right now. I ain't playing. I got to do what I need to do. And I don't care who's watching me. I'm on my way somewhere. And I can't get there if I stay where I am. And I'm ready now to turn my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm talking to you and you're ready to turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ today, my Bible says if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, my Bible says you shall be saved. Here it is. The first invitation is I want to get saved. And so I'm coming, I'm coming to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Just whoever's next to you, if you need to bust out the aisle, just say, excuse me, I have an appointment with destiny, and I'm coming to offer my life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. Is there one? Is there one who will come? I'm going to get saved. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm not going to let nobody get in the way of what God has for me. I'm coming. I'm coming. That's the first invitation. I want to get right with God. I got to do that first. I, I, I got to get ready for 
become a war cry. And in order to do that, I got to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to do that today. That's the first invitation. Uh, second invitation is this. I'm already saved. I have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a relationship already. I'm already saved. I just need to find a good, a good Bible teaching, Bible preaching, loving community of believers to connect with. Here's the place for you. Come and grow with us. 